Hello everyone, this is Nick Lawson with CDC Take Charge Software and this is our sixth session in building an improved desktop for the Microsoft operating system. Before we get into our session for today, let's recap on some of the changes that we've made so far. First, on the Quick Launch Manager, um, before it was simply presented two lists, uh, all your applications and then all the applications you've assigned to the Quick Launch. Now we've added the ability to manually add a file uh, to your Quick Launch Manager without using the built-in list that we read off of Windows. The reason for this is that some applications on the Start menu, um, the Start menu actually sets up a required memory space and by launching it through our application, the application doesn't necessarily behave correctly. A good example is the actual Snagit uh, application that I'm using to record this video. However, to overcome that, if I point to the file uh, at its location and run its executable, then the memory is allocated correctly and the application runs fine. So this change was a, a good and important change. Okay, next. On the file manager, we had the mouse selects, but we did not actually write the code for how that would work. So let's take a look at that real quick. Um, if I select a folder and I'm on mouse select, then I click copy or any of my utilities. Um, it takes and brings it over here and sets up whatever I've clicked on to be able to have the utility performed against it. Once that's done, if I grab a different folder, then I could do the same thing. And the original folder was discarded. Now the new one is ready to be used. This is a very quick, down and dirty, simple way for the user to be able to copy, move, rename, email, zip, delete, any file or folder without having to go through a lot of steps. OK, now let's get into our session for today. On our menu, we now have File Organizer. This was actually going to be the Document Manager, but it's become so much more than just a Document Manager, I thought I would change the name. When it loads, uh, and again, I want to say this is the very beginning. This form design may change 100 times before it's done, but this is just to get the data organized so I could begin to see how I want it to work. We have a search feature which will allow you to search by any part of the file name or path that you want to find a file. Um, we have a radio choice which has built-in quick filters for um, the different file types that we expect to manage. We have a list of the files and there's only one in here uh, and then we have the attributes for that file. This top field is not actually an attribute. What it is is the last type of player that the file was opened with. Um, so in this case it says media player and actually that's incorrect because it won't open an MP4 in Windows XP unless you get the latest upgrade which I haven't done. Um, but if I want to open this file and uh, it's on media player it'll return a generic Windows error. Okay. Um, so we just cancel out of that and then we can carry on and pick a different player, do whatever we want. I haven't decided if I want to change that error merit message or make my own custom message. Uh, I'll get to that as time goes on. Okay, so now to play it in another file, I've got two other ones. I got DivX and I got VLC. Let's select VLC. Um, now, edit open. There it is. Pretty cool. And if I switch to uh, DivX, I can do the same thing, and it opens in DivX. Now, that is actually a very good feature. Uh, a lot of people, they have files, they click on them to open them, they have no idea what it's going to open in. They may want it to be something else. When they download an application, if it's one that does files that other types do, they want you to change the association to work with their application. Can't blame them, but this way you don't have to. You just pick the player that you want and away it goes. You 
pick the word processor that you want, and away it goes. The spreadsheet program you want, away it goes. The presentation application you want, away it goes. Very cool and very easy for the user to use. Now let's take a look at how all that's going to work. So bring it up in design mode. And as I said, this is the very beginning early blush. So the only thing we actually have written on here is the code for this edit button. Here I can show you how this file is set up. And the type of file is a record list edit combo box. And the choice points out to a table, doc header, which is stores the application name and its location on the hard drive. Um, so that when we the user selects it, we know what application we want to run. All right. Now the code for the edit button, edit open button, again is very simple. Um, it could be more sophisticated. Uh, it could do a lot of uh, error checking and fetching and all kinds of things. But basically, all I did here is I set a variable. Uh, and that's open var, and open var is going to be the application that I want. I use table max to find the one, and I pass the text value of the object on the form as the filter. Select file is a variable that takes and gets the from the text objects on the form, or the text values, the uh, file path and the file name and the file extension and adds them to the var. Then C line is the var that I want to run using system shell and I'm running it with a uh, value 1. Value 1 opens it in a window. Value 2 minimizes it and puts it on a start bar. Value 3 opens it maximized on a screen. Pretty simple and that's all there is to it. Um, now again, uh, as I said, there can be a whole lot more code to it and there's stuff that I'm working on down here as to how I may make it work and make it more sophisticated. But no matter what application they choose, what file they want to open, it's all going to work from this one simple screen. And if they use the manager, they'll never lose that file because it stores the path here. So once they point to it and it's in our table, no matter what they do with it, if they update it, if they change the name, if they change the location, it's always going to be tracked right here. So it's very easy for them to find using any of the search features we'll have available. Now, let's look at a way that they can get this information over here that's fairly simple. Let's minimize this. And we're going to go back to our file manager. Here, Let's take and uh, navigate to our document folder. Now, all I have to do is go through and tag the type of files that I want. So the, uh, the ODT is a uh, star writers file. Um, I could use DOCs, I could do JPEGs, whatever I want. Then when I click on copy, I would select add to take charge file organizer. It'll prompt the user one time saying, uh, what file types are you adding to the organizer? You put documents. And then it puts it in there under documents. So when you select word processors, there they are. They're already organized nice and neat. And the user doesn't have to move those files. They can stay in the location they're in so that the original application it was created with still knows where it is. Very cool feature. Again, very easy for the user. All right, so that's it for today. On our next session, what we'll be looking at is the additional code that is needed to run the rest of this. And there may be, again, as I said, some design changes. I hope you'll stop by and join us for that. And until then, have a great day.